Hey, everybody. Fascinating and timely topic today on accelerating your AI development through a GPU-based cloud infrastructure with G-Core. Uh, Michele, how are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, good to meet everyone. I'm uh, Michele Taroni, dialing in from London. Well, good to have you here. London's a bit of a hot spot for AI development these days, so good place to be. Maybe introduce yourself, and for those who aren't familiar, to kick things off, who is G-Core? Sure. Um, so my name is Michele Taroni. I uh, joined uh, G-Core a few months ago as uh, heading up our AI product stream. I have a background in high-performance computing and um, machine learning development, particularly computer vision and other AI topics. And yeah, G-Core, we are a, um, a European-based but global AI infrastructure uh, provider. Uh, we have a, a global network of uh, 180 points of presence from our CDN network, and we're now expanding into the AI infrastructure space. So we're offering out both GPU clusters for training and also inference at the edge, which are topics that I'm sure we'll, we'll cover shortly. Yeah, these are all fascinating topics uh, for all of us industry watchers and uh, insiders. Um, so maybe describe a little bit about the network and how it works for, you know, AI training, how it's set up, configured, and how you see engaging, you know, existing and new clients in the AI space. What what does the process kind of entail? Yeah, of course. So as you probably know, when it comes to uh, developing um, AI, AI models and and then deploying them in, in production, there's two. Uh, sort of main phases of compute. Uh, the first one, of course, is the training phase. Um, many techniques, but normally these are very compute-intensive tasks where you are uh, feeding models uh, a large amount of data and training these models over uh, a sort of particularly long time. And that phase is very compute-intensive. And then once you then have a train model, then typically you then deploy that in some application. And then uh, end users using the application will then call the model and do what's known as model inference, where you, you, you sort of query a model and get a response. Uh, and so when it comes to um, sort of the infrastructure to, to do those, those two parts of the process, uh, there's sort of different requirements. Um, and uh, at GCO, we try to um, cater for both of those. So when it comes to the training side, I mentioned this is a very computation expensive part. And so what we're mm. trying to do is really provide a, a, a large compute cluster so that you can uh, train these, these large models on as much data as quickly as possible. And in, in this sort of situation, uh, what um, typically researchers or data scientists are looking for is uh, really raw compute power and scale. So people are running you know, large clusters of, of GPU servers and, uh, and feeding as much data as you can to try to get the performance they need. Um, on the other end of the, of the spectrum, once you come to inference, the an individual um, inference call is typically less compute intensive than a full training one. Uh, but of course, you have much more scale because you can imagine you have an application, you've got many, many users, each of them calling a model. And so in these uh, circumstances, what you're looking for is very fast response time so that you're, you, as a user, you're getting a very quick response from your query. Um, and, and you also care about uh, performance, you care about being able to service customers around the world, um, and you care about scaling. As I mentioned, you have many users, multiple queries, so you really care about how the compute scales up and down with usage. Yeah, fantastic uh, offer you, you're putting together here. Um, are, are there certain you know customers or use cases that you see as ideal kind of for your GPU cloud? What uh, you know? What are, what are you going for exactly? Uh, sure. Yes. Yeah. So when it comes to the uh, trading aspect, as I mentioned, our, our ideal customers are really customers are looking for uh, a large amount of interconnected compute. Uh, so what mm -hmm. I mean by that is typically when you when you you go to the cloud and and you might um, get hold of some compute. Uh, traditionally, you might get a you know an in virtual instance with you know, maybe a few CPUs or one or two GPUs. When it comes to training, you're looking for a large cluster. And so um, you want 
uh, that cluster be interconnected, very fast networking. That's something that, that we offer. So we're really focused on, on customers that need a lot of raw compute power. When it comes to the inference side, the so unique proposition of G-Core is that we can offer inference across our global locations with very, very low, low latency. Yeah. And so for us, an ideal customer is, is someone that is has a use case where they have a global customer base and they're looking for very, very fast response times wherever you are. And the benefit that we what we offer is that uh, regardless of where the user is, the actual inference will happen in a, in a local region near the user, which reduces the, the time it takes to reach the, the compute node and get the response back. Interesting. And you have a whole suite of services that you can potentially integrate with your GPU instances. I'm thinking of managed Kubernetes or what else? What, what else might be relevant to someone developing AI? Exactly that. So we have a, there's a range of workflows that um, typically happen when you're going from sort of AI research through to development, through to production. And we have a range of services that can cater for all of those. So typically, if you're, if you're just doing um, focusing purely on the training, then you want the most performance. And so we offer these sort of large AI training clusters. But once you get a little further along and you're doing managing more workflows and maybe training and inference, then yes, we can offer a managed Kubernetes service. And that enables you to really scale compute up and down and, and manage that more easily. Uh, we also offer, offer storage solutions. So you also if these models require a data train. So you typically need a lot of storage and you have to feed that um, to the training. Uh, and then through to the, to the inference side, uh, we have our new product inference at the edge, which are designed to enable customers to deploy a model uh, anywhere in the world through a single mm -hmm. endpoint. That's a great proposition. And so, you know, data privacy, security are top of everyone's mind these days. Um, yeah, how do you ensure privacy, security in this new paradigm uh, where you know everyone's worried about risk? Absolutely, and we and we see that uh, coming up the topic uh, time and time and again of our customers. Um, and our approach to this um, is is through our sort of uh, edge inferencing, as we call it. And the idea there is that um, regardless of where your users are the actual inference of the model will always happen in a local region that is near to the user. So what that means is that supposing you have a user in the United States, then when they want to do model inference, the, the data and the inferencing will stay in the United States. While if you have another user who is in say um, Japan, then in that case, we will do the inference in Japan. And that means that the data will also stay local to Japan and so mm. in that way, we really, we really ensure that um, all users there, their data is, is, is staying local and being processed locally. Yeah, nice, nice approach. You know, so when it comes to, you know, the big tech, the hyperscalers, uh, competitors of yours, perhaps, I mean, how do you, how do you see yourself positioned? I mean, these are pretty expensive resources, GPUs, pretty hard to come by. Um, how do you set yourself apart in this market where you've got, you know, all the hyperscalers and very big companies like X here, we're broadcasting on, who are, you know, beginning to consume these GPUs? Absolutely. There's, there's uh, been a huge growth in this space in the last couple of years. As you mentioned, you've got uh, both the hyperscalers who have you know, been around, who have huge scale and are now mm. sort of moving into, into this space. Um, and then you also have some uh, newer companies who who come in recently to the market. And um, what we're finding is that we're positioning ourselves is that um, unlike hyperscalers, we can offer both a public cloud but also a private cloud offering. So what mm -hmm. that means is that if a customer wants a dedicated cluster, we can actually deploy it and, and architect it just for them. And that again ensures uh, greater privacy. Um, and our other benefit is that um, particularly for uh, customers that are uh, either either in in Europe or outside the US, uh, the fact that we have our data centers and our, our, our data processing uh, again local, so either in Europe or in other parts of the world, it is equally something that is um, quite important uh, to some customers. 
Um, likewise, when it comes to the, to the inference side, we've really focused a lot on, on, on the network performance, network speed. That is something that as a um, provider that we can really out from a CDN space is something that really differentiates us. We have a very, very low latency network that is mm. uh, one of the best on the market. And that enables us to, to offer very, very low latency, fast inferencing. Nice. Describe your network a bit. We didn't really get into this, but where are your points of presence? And I, I think you're in a lot of places that are unusual, at least from the U.S. perspective. You don't hear about a lot, but uh, um, you're in some really interesting places. Will you put GPUs in all those different points of presence, or how do you see that being rolled out? Uh, absolutely. So as you say, our, our, we have a global network with uh, over 180 points of presence now. Uh, they're distributed um, truly globally with large presence in Eastern Europe, um, Africa, the Far East. So it, it's definitely not so sort of centered around just Europe and US. Mm. It's, it's much more global. Um, in terms of then our uh, deployment of GPUs across that, so um, we are we, we started with a few strategic locations, particularly the US, Europe, and Far East. But we're looking to grow that throughout uh, you know, over time. A large, a large proportion of the points of presence to be able to cover the full, um, the, the full global sort of area that, that we cover from our points of presence. Very nice, very nice. And and in terms of scalability, I assume you can start pretty small for labs or proof of concepts, and and then scale pretty large as you as you do with your uh, variety of services. How does that work in terms of scalability and growth? Absolutely. So one of the uh, things we've really focused on in our, on, on our inference product is to make it um, very scalable uh, and scale down back down to zero. So what that means is that mm. if you're not, if you don't have any use at the from time, uh, you you have no GPUs and you're not paying for anything. So it's a full pay-to-go model. And then uh, with that model, you can start from you know, a very small amount of of capacity where maybe you just have a few users and you need just a uh, just single GPU. Uh, or you can scale up to you know tens or, or hundreds of GPUs, so it's a very flexible solution, and uh, we've really put a lot of a lot of effort into in, into doing that, so that um, customers are getting uh, the computer when they need it, and then uh, when there's maybe a, a period of downtime, they are then releasing those resources and and getting um, not paying for them. Yeah, it seems like the only logical way to build a platform now. These are very expensive devices. Probably pretty hard to come fo- come by. I don't. I don't uh, feel. I feel bad for your supply chain people trying to get a hold of GPUs at scale at this time. But uh, good luck with with that. I'm sure you'll overcome those challenges. Is it too early to talk about any deployments or use cases? Are we more in the you know trial and uh, science you know project sure, and, so, you know yeah. testing phase? Yeah, so right now, uh, the Inference at the Edge product was launched uh, earlier this month. So okay, we're in a, in a, in a, thank you very much. We're in a um, initial beta phase. So we, we have sort of early customers uh, across a number of use cases that are, that are, are, are trying out, getting sort of early feedback. And then some of those we will hopefully scale out in the, in the coming weeks and months. Um, in terms of use cases, um, really getting interest across, uh, across the board. Um, some of those are in gen- generative AI use cases, for example, mm. um, image image uh, generation for, say, uh, marketing type use cases or or film generation. And then we're also getting interest in in other applications, um, in for example, gaming, where we have uh, a lot of existing customers mm. who uh, come from the, the network space and they're looking at um, sort of real time applications for AI within their gaming. And so they still really need that um, low latency, fast response time to offer a very good customer experience to, to their users. Fantastic. And, you know, as someone who's been in this field rather a long time, what are you most excited about, about what's next in this next AI wave? What's, uh, what's on your mind? Um, I think yeah, what's, what's really exciting um, for the last few years is, is the way that you know, we've had this huge explosion of interest, of course, and particularly since ChatGPT. I mean, um, you know, I guess AI and deep learning has been around for a few years, but I think in the kind of uh, public conscious, it really exploded 
Um, with the advent of chat GPT and suddenly there's a whole new set of use case and applications that that uh, become possible. Um, I think what's really exciting is that in the last maybe 18 months, there's been a lot of experimentation, a lot of a lot of proof of concepts, a lot of pilots. And what we're really seeing is now um, that businesses, whether it's uh, small businesses, but also enterprises, are now starting to see the value of those of those um, POCs and pilots, and now really scaling out adoption at, at, at large scale. Um, that's really exciting from a kind of personal perspective in terms of just seeing that 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 use in to solve real problems, and also from a from a GCOR or, or perspective, it's it just shows that the kind of problems you have to solve slightly change. You're moving from people more doing more doing research, experimentation, and uh, but maybe just a small number of users and a small number of use cases to suddenly you've got to scale out, you know, across across the world with you know, thousands or millions of users. Uh, and that creates a, a whole set of interesting challenges uh, and great opportunities for, for companies such as ours. Fantastic. So, uh, and just on a personal note, this summer, any travel or trips planned or just heads down uh, getting this product to uh, full production. Sure, there's certainly a lot of a lot of um, you know work to do in the next few months for the whole team where we're really focused on on this product. But uh, of course, it being it being the summer, although you wouldn't know it yet in the UK, but summer <laughs> is is around the corner. Uh, you may have guessed from from my name, Michele is originally Italian, so I'll be spending a bit of time oh. in Italy hopefully to get a a bit more sunshine. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we're, we're we're really focused. We've got some exciting uh, proof of concepts coming up, and we're looking to take the product to the next level um, and out of the beta phase to the full production. Fantastic. Well, we'll all be watching. I see here on your LinkedIn profile, you went to the University of Oxford. Uh, I went. I didn't go to Cambridge University, but I, I lived there for quite a while. Uh, who's doing the best work these days in in uh, AI research? Would you say Cambridge or Oxford? Who's your <laughs> your alma mater or Cambridge University? Uh, I think it's it's a great question. It's probably unfair to pick one <laughs> of the two. They they're both doing uh, fantastic research in different areas. Um, I mean, Oxford, where, where where I came from, had a was one of the sort of leading groups in the original sort of computer vision, uh, deep learning. Right. Um, sort of group as a, a number of the professors went on went on to to Google and Meta and places like that. Uh, but uh, but in you know, with AI moving to really so many different areas, also pharma, healthcare, biotech. Uh, Cambridge mm. also doing some fantastic work there. And Cambridge also has the uh, well, what was the largest supercomputer in the UK until recently. There's now a, a bigger one over in Bristol. Uh, right. But you know, as you know, the the real kind of was driver. Um, behind all of this uh, AI growth is is just compute power, and uh, that's why we're seeing such such growth. And you know, all the hype around Nvidia, of course, and the, the growth in that stock market. It's because it's really the compute that unlocks all these incredible applications, and uh, and that's why I, that, that's the problem that GCore is trying to trying to solve. You know, working with our partners on Nvidia to really make to really give access uh, to this infrastructure that enables all these amazing applications. Yeah, it's unlocking a whole new opportunity. Congratulations on that and keep in touch. Look forward to seeing all the progress and the value you're creating. Fantastic. No, I've, I've been great to talk to you about it and uh, I look forward to uh, well, the growth and, and keeping in touch. Thanks so much. Take care everyone and thanks for uh, watching.